if your date offers to split the bill, does that mean that the date went horribly? If that's it, the case, then all my dates have been horrible. Then, oh so. no! <laughs> Sonia, it's been a hot minute since we came back for Men Explained, but we are officially back. In case you forgot me already, which you better not have, I will come and look for you. We really have amazing guests who come on down and join us every single episode to debunk lots of topics. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, we get really down and dirty and honest. Literally all opinions are aired and there's no holes barred when it comes to these episodes. Today, I have a very special guest. We've hung out personally, I think like one time, and I already know some of his dirty secrets because it was over a couple of drinks. Please welcome Tse Liang. Hi, I'm Tse Liang. <laughs> I'm from the Chinese radio station Yes 933. Yes, so you are basically the Mandarin version of 987. We kind yeah. of reflect each other in that sense. Sort of, we play like the hip Chinese songs yeah. that you love. Yeah. You know a few, I right? I have no clue what is a hip okay. Chinese song yeah. right now. Please try me. Okay, how about yeah. Li Rong Hao, you should know, right? No, I know Zhou Jia Lun. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, but Telang, tell us a bit more about yourself. You know, we never really got down to sit like this and chat. So tell us a bit more. You came into this industry. Is it at all what you expected? I don't know, man. When I came to the industry, it was technically about five to six years ago. Yeah. When I first stepped foot in Middle Cop. That was after the competition. So I was from the same batch as Hazel, right? Yes. And then we joined a competition together. I got a part-time contract with Middle Cop. Mm -hmm. Started doing part-time, like a weekend DJ kind of thing. I did my internship here as well. And then I left for army and uni. Mm. So I came back after about five years-ish. Mm. And I just joined a station last year. It was a very refreshing experience. Okay. I mean, yeah, there are ups and downs for sure. Yeah. And this is going to be an equally interesting experience because sometimes our guests have no idea what's going to happen during the show. Oh, yeah. And today uh -huh. we're addressing this topic and I'm sure you have tons of things you want to say. Should men always make the first move? Ooh. Should men always pay on the first date, oh. for example? These <laughs> things, I don't know, man. I think they're expectations, you know, in a relationship and when people start dating and all that. So I want to kick it off with you. What is your dating status right now? Are you dating? No. You're not? Really? I'm not, yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. When was the last time you went on a date date? Ooh, the last time was not too long ago, actually. Okay. Yeah. So then, in your dating life, have you ever encountered people who uh, maybe expect a certain thing out of their male partner? I think I'm quite lucky, to yeah. be honest. I've never met anyone who set out any expectations for me mm. as a partner, but I've heard a lot of stories about similar things, mm -hmm. like in terms of financial status, mm. in terms of your goals in life, that mm -hmm. sort of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so far, your dating experience has been very chill and most of them are on the same page as you. I would say so. Mm. Uh, well, what about you? Um, it's interesting. I mean, I usually date older guys. Okay. And uh, I mean, I think my life is an open book at this point on Men Explain. Mm. Uh, so far, you know, I, as, as a partner, I don't expect someone to get the bill on the first date. Um, in fact, interesting thing, when I started talking to my current boyfriend, I actually manipulated him to ask me out for dinner. Oh. Yes, I'm wow. using the word manipulate, mm. <laughs> like 100%. How does it work? Okay, so here's what happened. He and I met, and then we were talking, you know, texting quite a bit and stuff yeah. like that. But he, he didn't ask me out for like two weeks. That is like okay. two years in girl years, you know what really? I mean? Really? In girl time. And then all of a sudden he goes, hey, you want to hang? So I was like, you know, chop tape, cool, right? So I said, yeah, okay, sure. When? When are you free? He was like, you want to do lunch? Lunch, eh? Lunch. What's wrong I don't, with lunch? Okay, you tell me what's wrong with lunch. I, I don't what? know. That, that's, what? that's what I say like half the time. Like, hey, you want to go to a cafe for breakfast or something? And that's your idea of a first date? Now I know. Or okay, <laughs> I've been making some mistakes, clearly. <laughs> I don't know whether it's because um, my idea of getting to know someone on a first date would rather be a bit formal, you know, like over dinner, over a longer meal. Like lunch feels like he has a very valid excuse to rush off like right after that. Oh. Y you know what I mean? Am I overthinking it? I don't know. No, actually, Sisters, that's, that's, help me out here. <laughs> that's quite valid, right? Yeah, it yeah, is yeah, valid. Yeah, okay, so okay. I was thinking to myself, this guy isn't really keen on getting to know me much better. So then I said, you know what? All my lunch dates are out for the next two weeks. I'm like super busy. So do you want to meet for dinner instead? And then he goes, yeah, sure, okay. And so I asked him about it a while later. I said, like, how come you didn't ask me out to dinner? You asked me for lunch. He said, oh, I just wanted to, like, suss you out. I wasn't sure whether it would go well or not. <laughs> oh, so I was like, okay. oh my God, I'm going to try to not be offended right now. But in long story short, I definitely manipulated him to have dinner with me. I always thought that it doesn't make too much of a difference yeah. whether it's lunch or dinner. But now I know. 
it actually matters. And I also didn't know that two weeks is like two years to girls. Yeah. I'm, I'm very slow at replying. So that's the first thing. You're slow at replying. Okay. Yeah, extremely slow. My friends always say, I'll just send a, a pigeon or dove to you. That's faster. Then secondly, I also think that, you know, I don't want to rush into things. I okay. don't want to seem too eager. Okay. Yeah, so just take it slow. Okay, so you've got to find the in-between. If a guy's taking too long to reply me, I'm also going to be like, maybe I should move on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, clearly I have not mastered that. Okay, so, so then let's take you back to the first date situation. Yep. Do you have any expectations of your date when you guys first meet and go out? Okay, there's one. I mm. think it's like a pet peeve for a lot of people is okay. how they treat service staff. Ooh. I think that matters a lot, right? Like when yes. you go on a first date, it doesn't matter whether it's a normal restaurant or you go to a very posh diner, that sort of things. You just want to see the way they treat the waiter, yes. for example, right? Yes. Yeah, let's say they get your food order wrong. Let's say they're a little bit slow with the service. Mm. You know, how would they react? I think it's very important. It is. It's very telling of someone's character. Yeah. Have you come across someone like this in your dating life? In a good way or a bad way? In a bad way, I guess. Not in a dating sense, but I have friends who have done that. Oh, are you still friends? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I, I, I did speak to the friend afterwards. Okay. I was like, that was uncalled, uncalled for. for. A yeah. little bit, yeah. Safe to say that if a date did that, it would be a red flag immediately for you. I guess, yeah. So I've done like wedding banquets before. Uh huh. Oh, and yeah. And then you'll see okay. the way that people treat us when you're at a wedding banquet. Was it? It was bad. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it was a pretty tough job as well. You got to carry loads of plates. And the longest I've worked was about 16 hours in a day. But then you learn to appreciate people working in the F&B industry. For sure. No wonder that is your pet peeve. What are some expectations you think women have of men? On a first date? The first thing would probably be who's going to pay mm -hmm. the bill mm -hmm. when the bill comes. Mm -hmm. Usually it would be the guy. La. Okay, usually it would yeah. be the guy. So you're used to that. Yeah, oh. I think it's the norm, right? Like, So has your date ever offered to pay? Yeah, I was like, who? Who did offer you, to pay? Did you offer to split or pay? No, no, no. Or, no. Okay. okay, so what I think is I will always offer to pay for the first date. Okay. No matter what we got, right? I will just, whenever the bill comes, I'll pay yeah. for it first. Yeah. And then if the girl... Uh, suggests splitting the bill or she offers to to pay instead, I'll just take it as a, a huge plus point. Huh? Really? Yeah. Because I have some friends whom I've spoken to um, whom I asked, if your date offers to split the bill, does that mean that the date went horribly and you just don't want to owe anyone anything <laughs> at the end of the day? Really? Yeah. Am I overthinking? I have no idea. I mean, if that's the case, then all my dates have been horrible. Then, oh, so. no. <laughs> I'm sorry, ladies. Okay, he needs to he needs to be set up on a on a date very soon. <laughs> uh, I thought it's very normal. Like yeah. the guy will always offer to pay first, mm -hmm. and then you will just kind of like glance over at a girl and see whether she wants to, to make a in. little move. Yeah, right. It's like a subtle movement, like pretend to take out a wallet or something like That yeah, counts. Yeah. At, at least pretend, right? Yeah, at least pretend, you right? Know, or at least like, to, you like can take out slowly, your, but yeah, you know, yeah, pay away for something. Let me see the motion, you know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. You, know. you can judge a person's character from there, actually. Yeah, but I know sometimes, uh, let's say the girl does not offer to pay for, yeah. let's say dinner, right? Mm -hmm. But then she says, uh, maybe you can grab a drink. Okay, then she gets the drink. And then she gets okay, the drink. that's positive. I like yeah, that move, actually. I love that too. So then let's just say, you know, um, aside from getting the bill on the first date, mm. there are so many other expectations that people have for each other. Okay. Um, going into a relationship or when they start dating and all that. When you come to the texting phase, right, when people, you know, exchange messages, usually that's the most exciting part when you're like flirting and stuff like that. <laughs> usually, you would be the one making the first move, no? Yeah, I would say so. Have yeah. you ever come across a, a woman, a girl who made the first move and you found it refreshing? Oh, for sure. Has it's that happened? more than refreshing. It's yeah. very welcomed, I would say. Cool. I think most of us, like guys, we're used to making a first move, mm. uh, be it texting, asking, uh, asking a girl out or whatever, right? And then when a girl turns the table around and then yeah. she does it first, you'll be like, whoa, yeah. that's nice. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't want to feel like they're being liked by someone else? Yeah, need to boost your ego a little bit yeah, too. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know I mean? So, I mean, of course we have that too. And then, you know, there's so many other like rules of dating, such as when you text, like you always have to be the one to initiate stuff like that. Yeah. You know, does this still happen or is this like a high school thing? I, I, I think it doesn't happen as often as high school yeah. as you mentioned, right? Like last yeah. time it's always like the guy must make a lot of moves. Right, I'm just I've waiting on my Motorola phone <laughs> like for, yeah, for the text. Pretend that you can't see the text. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Then, yeah, okay, yeah. So I, I, was, I remember in secondary school, right? Yeah, like yeah. a lot of girls in class, they'll be like, uh, oh, he just texted me but like, ain't no girl, you cannot reply yet. You must play hard to get. Oh, wait you a while, wait, wait a while. You wait exactly 23 minutes later than you reply and I was like, why the number 23? Nah, I don't know. Lah. <laughs> it's the magic number. Just make it look random. Yeah, they just like, mm, just don't make him feel like you actually want to give him attention. So as we grow up and we Things actually change. get very busy, yeah, we course. actually don't have time to reply. So, yeah. you know, it's a different ballgame altogether. So I'm going to take it one step further. How do you feel about women proposing to men? 
honestly, I don't know what to feel about it. I, really? I feel like the whole feel proposing awkward? situation is very stressful. Mm-hmm. Like, wouldn't you be a little bit paranoid? Okay, let's say you are in a long-term relationship with someone. Yeah. And then you are not 100% sure that the person will say yes. Mm. And then, wouldn't it get a little bit awkward? Personally, I don't think too much into proposals and stuff. Like, I feel like it should be a moment between two people. Yeah, for sure. It can be simple. It doesn't have to be extravagant. Please don't do a flash mob. You know, yeah, don't do I'll a flash mob. Don't, yeah. you know, put the laser beam stuff on MBS. No, like or, a hot air balloon or something. Yeah, or that yeah. drone thing. There was this guy that did this drone thing like, marry me, please. What if she says no? Oh my God. Just Or worse, she's drones. pressured to say yes and then after oh, yeah, that, she's like, sorry, I actually yeah. meant At a to concert. Say no. And it, yeah, like in front you of ask, thousands of people, you know, and then you Jay ask. to uh, say something. Yeah, you, you can't say no, right? You can't say no. You can't say no. I mean, you can technically, but yeah. you'd be pressured to say yes. You'd be like, yeah, but not really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but <laughs> let me talk later. Like, <laughs> let's talk. <laughs> <laughs> but I've I've seen a lot of women now proposing to their partners. Yeah, for sure. Which is very interesting. I, I wonder whether that makes you and fellow bros feel, you know, a certain way. Like, do you feel mm. like ah? awkward or like I should have done that you know kind of thing yeah I, I think a little bit a little part of us would feel like ah oh, maybe I should have made a move first yeah is it like am I being too reluctant yeah am I too oblivious to to what's going on here why am I not the one making the move because mm. typically I think we're all taught that the guy should be the one making all the, the big first moves right yeah, yeah such yeah. Uh, big decisions especially like proposing I think it's very refreshing to see ladies take the turn instead mm-hmm. yeah. okay so then I guess when it comes uh, back to the whole dating scene right when you're going out and you're hanging out and stuff like that let me give you a, a situation so if for example you guys are deciding where to go for dinner and your date suggests like a super expensive Michelin star restaurant Place. Okay, okay, okay. Would you be like okay to pay for that if it's like Ooh. 500 per head, you know? Ooh. Or do you think that the person who suggested the place should offer to split or pay for it too? Honestly, I've not been put in such a situation before. Yeah. Uh, I can't imagine what that will be like. Mm-hmm. But honestly, I feel like the two of you should agree on a place that you both want to explore with. or yeah, you're comfortable with financially, right? Yeah. Yeah, you can't be walking into a place that you know you can't afford and yeah. you will never financially recover from it yep. and then still offer to pay the bill. I don't yeah. think it makes sense. Though. It's good to communicate first and see if you guys can reach a mutual agreement rather than forcing yourself to go to a place you're not comfortable with. So then if your partner is constantly suggesting expensive places every time you guys are going out, is that a red flag for you? I think it depends yeah. on what is your financial situation and what is theirs. Mm-hmm. So if they're earning way more than you, right? Mm. You can understand oh, why they want to go to more extravagant places. Yeah, it's a lifestyle But I think thing. you should, you know, suggest to them that, hey, maybe yeah, I don't earn as like, much. Enjoy some hawker food today yeah, or something. Like, chicken rice is nice too. It's a balance, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, think you should communicate more and let them know that you're not comfortable going yeah. out to expensive restaurants every single time. Yeah, and you have not encountered someone like this yeah. before. Luckily, I've not. Yeah. Actually, your dating life has been quite tame. Uh. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Any interesting stories or not from uh-huh. your past dates? Define any, any tea that you want to spill here Ooh. on the show? I, I feel like I'm still learning throughout the whole dating scene. Really? Yeah. You're still learning? But he's so eligible. What's going on here? <laughs> Are you like generally an introvert, for example? Yeah, Or I you're am an though. introvert? Yeah. Okay. And yet you're in the media. I know, right? Lovely. And I'm a, I'm a radio DJ. Yeah. So do talk non-stop every day. Yeah, and technically, back in the past, um, being a radio presenter may have come across as a slightly introverted job because you're alone all the time. But now it's different. You're on camera, Mm -hmm. you know, you are hosting things outside, you're in front of hundreds of people, you're visiting schools, you're doing so many things. Does that or your point or your line of work affect your dating life sometimes? Like, do... Do, do women look at you and sometimes think like, oh, he must be very fancy or earn a lot. Like, you know, let me... I'm, I'm sure you have experienced similar... I have. Over in Zook, actually, the last time we were at Zook, there was a guy that came up to me and he said, hey, you're Sonia. And he was like, hey, let me get you a drink. And then I said, sure. Like, sure, you know, I was just with friends and I wasn't seeing anyone at the point in time. And then he goes, um, I really want to ask you for your number and I want to ask you out. And he was like, but the only, only thing that's stopping me is that I'm sure you only eat at Michelin star restaurants. And I was like, okay, that was an ultimate turn off for me. I, was, I, was, I, know, I don't expect him to know me, yeah. but it's just that he had an assumption of me based on what he sees. You know, From on, social media? Yeah, either okay. social media. Or, but then again, on social media, I don't really even post anything. So like, wait, he came up to you and said like, oh, but I assume you only eat at Hawker Centre. Yeah, I'll be like, fine. Yeah, I love Hawker food. Oh, awesome. <laughs> like, why yeah. not, right? But why make that assumption, right? I don't know exactly in the first place. So I did tell him like, hey man, sorry, I'm not really 
interested to continue the conversation. But like, hope that hope you know that I don't only eat at Michelin star restaurants. <laughs> I don't know if you have come across anything um, related to that. Well, I've met a lot of people like we're just in a talking phase and yeah. we realized that the timing is really hard to match. Mm. Right? So I work the night shift. I work from 8pm to 12pm. Ooh, that's Monday be to tough. Friday, right? Yeah. Okay, so the only time you can meet them if they are also a working adult is after work and before my work starts. Yes. But it makes things hard because people want to hang out like dinner, then drinks exactly. and stuff like that. So you right? can't do that, right? Yeah. And the only time you get to meet them is say after work mm. which is after 12 midnight yeah and then they and have how, work tomorrow how, yeah, which is exactly. really hard yeah exactly how are they going to do yeah, that yeah if not it's weekend yeah maybe that's why it's hard for you to be dating so often I guess should we appeal to your boss to change yeah, shift for I, you so watching your this, so. dating life can improve after this <laughs> But on that note, you know, um, still on dating, obviously, what if the girl that you asked out happened to be extremely rich? Like she's like, I don't know, like a tycoon's daughter or something okay. like that. Okay. Will that change the dynamic then for you if you guys go out and she wants to get a fancy place and then you go, I'm not sure because, you know, I'm still, you know, working very hard yeah. and hustling out there. But she's like, don't worry, I got it. And it doesn't just happen once, it happens almost every single time. She's like, don't okay. worry, I got it. When you guys go out, don't worry, I got it. Like, how does that make you feel? I think if you pressure it, right? You, will like, you? What are you bringing to the table here? What are you contributing Your to unconditional this? unconditional love, obviously. Ooh, okay, okay. <laughs> obviously. Yeah, I mean, that's one thing. Yeah. But financially, you'll be like, it's quite a burden. Uh. Yeah. But how are you going to make up for it? Imagine you go with your friend, and yeah. your friend is always the one paying. Yeah. You feel bad, right? That's what we're taught mm -hmm. since young. So yeah, mm -hmm. you feel like you owe this person something, and you want to make up to them, but yeah. you don't know how. So, I mean, that is a very common thing nowadays. I see sometimes uh, my friends telling me about these things too. For some reason, you know, meeting somebody who's like a lot wealthier than you and stuff could really throw the dynamic mm. off. For sure. of the entire relationship and change certain things. But I wonder if the tables were turned and a girl actually dated an extremely rich guy and he's like, I got it. Then we'll just be like, okay, all right. <laughs> like, will we? I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm just thinking on behalf of my sisters. Like, I might just be like, yeah, sure, I don't mind. But I could be suggesting next time, like, hey guys, maybe we don't have to go expensive places all the time. You know, kind okay, of so I've heard balance. from um, girl friends okay. who have who similar experiences, really rich right? Men. Okay. Yeah, they'll be like, yeah, Tell why me. not? You know, I, I put all this time to do my makeup and mm. all, mm. so he should appreciate my time. Mm -hmm. And in return, he gives me his time plus his money lah. Yeah. So they feel like it's fair. <laughs> really? Yeah. Interesting. What about gifts though? I wonder, like, if he's always splurging on you, like gifts versus the other way around. Like, would you feel like you owe her something? Yeah, for sure. Mm. I, I think even as normal friends, right, you'll feel a bit weird if, let's say, for your birthday, your friend gives you a really nice watch yeah. and you give him, like, a tumbler in return. Yeah. <laughs> it's the thought that counts, technically. Yes, yes. Yeah, but you feel a little bit bad because the value doesn't really match at all. Where do you find friends like that who buy you brand new watches? Imaginary friends. Yeah, okay. I don't really They're have not, They don't actually exist. Yeah. The Tumblr friends exist, right? Yes, <laughs> like, th those... 100%, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> so, I haven't been on dating apps before, have you? Yeah, I have. You have? Mm. Which ones? Mm. Everything. Uh, I've tried. Wait, was it three? Yeah, three. <laughs> three. Different colours. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, so there's a yellow one, there's a yes. red one, there's yes. a purple one, is it? Okay. Yeah, I think so. I'm so unfamiliar with that. But according to a Bumble study, yeah. Bumble sounds like the yellow one, is it? Uh -huh. Is it? Uh -huh. Is it? 81% uh -huh. <laughs> of Singapore respondents say that gender roles make people behave differently from who they truly are. And 79% say that gender roles make it more difficult to build equal relationships. So the question is, have you ever pretended a little bit to, you know, be a certain way on the dating apps when you're getting to know people and you try to, I don't know, maybe overcompensate or you're slightly different from who you really are when you're talking to oh, strangers on apps? Slightly different, I think, yeah. yeah but in I'm what quite way? introverted, right? Yeah. So when I'm talking to someone on a dating app, you can't be like all shy and all. Mm. You gotta make the first move. You mm -hmm. gotta carry the conversation half the time. Mm -hmm. You gotta add a little bit more extroverted, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So so that's one part. Mm -hmm. But I don't think there's any other aspects of it that have pretended to be someone that I'm not. Have you met someone who did that before? Like, you know, your experience chatting with a person is almost completely different from in-person meeting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's certainly a few experiences like that. Like, say the person is very chatty on the app itself. Yeah. But when you meet them, they're just like stoning half the time. Oh, no. Then you'll be wondering, am I the boring one? Am I boring you? Right, Yeah, right. what's happening here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Have you had similar experiences? Um, You know, once again, I've never been on dating apps. Right, like, like just like, meeting people after texting them. You know, I have to say, I have to admit, a lot of the guys I dated, I met at like clubs. <laughs> 
So, uh-huh. so <laughs> that's that's like it's easy where, to carry a conversation, right? Yeah. So you, you actually you actually meet someone in person. I don't know whether this is like kind of old school because okay. this yeah. was obviously pre 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 pandemic, right? Like that's the place where you would meet people, like bars, clubs. You know, you just talk to people. I don't know whether the whole onset of the pandemic has changed the way people communicate with each other and made people even more shy or less inclined to make the first move mm. in person. I think so. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Like That's the only way, right? During the pandemic. It's, exactly. You can't you actually meet it. people. Yeah. So I feel like people might have t- taken a few steps back. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Might have taken a few steps back in terms of being more um, forthcoming in person when you meet people. So yeah, it could I think be tougher so. nowadays. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, I think there's a layer of us that we want to present our best side when you first meet someone. Yes, of course. Yeah, but sometimes we go a little bit too much on that and then you're pretending to be someone you're not, which mm. I've heard a lot of stories about. Like the guy is acting really nice and polite and then he's actually really controlling later mm. on, that sort of things. But only time will tell, right? That's yeah, the la. problem. Like, you only know once you start dating them a little bit longer. Obviously, when it comes to that as well, um, you would have dated a whole bunch of different types of people all around. Okay. Shy ones, independent ones, hit strong ones. Mm. Um, do you feel intimidated by strong, independent women who have, you know, strong opinions? Ooh, not at all. Not at all? I love it. You love it? Yeah. Tell me I'm more. I'm not a very clingy person. Tell us more, tell us more. Yeah. Tell so so I need more. my personal space and yeah. time. Right? Mm. So I prefer if I have a few days of the week to myself. What That's if she's very idea. controlling? What if she wants to make all the decisions? Like she's very headstrong. She has opinions about what you do or what you wear and stuff like that. I think it's good to have someone to to share their opinions with you. Mm-hmm. Okay, say for example, the easiest one is choosing where to eat for dinner. Yes. Yeah, a lot of people just tell you, I don't know, anything, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And then does you that, pick a does few. Does that make you frustrated sometimes? Yeah, like, yeah. it's it's not like hard. Yeah. yeah. But then you, when you tell them, you give them a few options, they'll be like, eh, not really, don't feel like this. Yeah. So you actually do have an opinion in mind. Mm. You just... Don't want to, didn't say it. Yeah, I just didn't want to say yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I, I prefer if they say it up front. Mm. And then for other things, it's like, let's say they give some advice on your career. Mm. I think it's great to hear a different opinion from someone who's not in your shoes at the moment. I mean, okay, being in the media industry, I think we can both relate on this. Um, I've shared some experiences before on this very show, actually, about dating people outside of my industry. Actually, I've never dated someone in the industry before. Okay. It's all been outside. And my experience has been interesting, to say the least, but I want you to share yours first. Have you ever come across a situation where you went on a date with someone and, you know, um, she, for example, doesn't think very much of the industry that you're in. Yeah. What happened there? Tell me more details. I think she's met a few people from our industry before. Okay. Yeah, or maybe even dated a few. Mm. Yeah, so she doesn't think very highly of... In what way? The kind of things we do, the working hours, and Mm -hmm. also the type of people that I think she met in the industry. She'll be like, oh, I think most of them are not very serious about relationships. Oh, really? Yeah, I heard that before. Okay. I mean, I've heard people saying things about people in the media industry, like, oh, they, you know, maybe you haven't figured out what you really want to do yet. (laughs) Or like, you're just having fun, like, you know, doing this stuff, you know, because you haven't really truly figured out your life. Uh Uh-huh. Um, and I once was with this guy, awkward situation. Uh, we were at someone's wedding, actually, okay? And we had been dating for, I think, like maybe half a year at least already. Okay. So, attended a friend's wedding. It was all his friends over there. Sat down. They're all like doctors, lawyers, um, that kind of stuff, okay? Right. Not knowing his friends over there, this guy who's a lawyer, he was like, so what is it exactly you do, like, aside from just looking nice in front of the camera? So then I, I very nicely told him and described what I do, you know, a busy day for us typically and all that, sure. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he started saying, do you know how much I earn an hour? I bet, like, your whole month's pay can't even, like, cover my one-hour consultation Ooh. fee. I was like, bitch, sit down. <laughs> Who gave him the, the permission? The know, permission right? to say that. FYI, I'm not going to disclose what our rates are, but you can sit down, okay? <laughs> so I feel like these things, you know, your industry, the choices you make um, in school, you know, your tertiary education, all that, it could already start forming certain perceptions and people have certain expectations. I think it depends know? on the kind of group of people they hang out with as well. Exactly. My friends who do like uh, finance and then their whole group. Uh, all earning quite a bit mm, for a fresh mm, grad. Mm. And then they will judge other career choices. Yeah. 
yeah, then they, sometimes they'll talk to me lah. They'll be like, actually, why do you choose to do this? Ah? Yeah. So you've got no other choice. You know, right. I have to say, this is a whole other topic on its own, right? But yeah, um, yeah we don't have to justify it. I mean, For you sure. know, as long as we enjoy what we do, um, That's what matters. we don't even have to reveal too much information, <laughs> I feel sometimes, even to your friends um, who might get a bit toxic sometimes. So on that note as well, if you dated, say, a girl who indeed earns more than you, mm. how will that... Um, form your foundation of your relationship. Let's say you're around the same age. She doesn't really quite, she doesn't look down on your industry, nothing, but she definitely earns more. Would you I, be okay with that? Yeah. You'd I think totally it changes fine. a lot of things. Yeah, it doesn't change a lot of things. Yeah. Okay, so okay. normally, let's say you're dating someone, you go out with them mm. for a couple of months, mm -hmm. you're going to start sharing the bills for everything, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's no longer just going to be like, oh, I'm going to pay for all the dates, I'm going to yeah. pay for all the meals. Yeah. It's probably going to be splitting or you cover the first one and she'll take the second one and mm, some things. Mm. And then it's pretty equal from there on, right? So That's I don't good, think yeah. It, it matters a lot until you get to the point of marriage. It's funny you mentioned that because, you know, um, there was a study that showed actually women, especially in more serious relationships or mm -hmm. who are married and stuff like that, who are very successful in their professional lives, they might actually feel a little bit bad about it if they earn more than their really? partner and try to overcompensate, for example, at home. So maybe things like, you know, I will try my best to like spend more time with the kids or do the dishes or offer to do this and that. But what That's are your thoughts on that? interesting. Yeah. Because if we're both working adults, right? Mm -hmm. And we're both working like full-time jobs to cover your monthly bills and the mortgage mm. and stuff, right? Uh, I think it's kind of weird that one person has to put in a lot more time than the other. Mm. Mm. So let's say you're working and I'm working and we come home, we're both super tired, right? Yeah, yeah. Then we should just split all the house chores together. Or just don't do the chores. Like, yeah, just you get, know, do it tomorrow. I'll I don't get know. a helper, I don't know. <laughs> so on the topic of like dating norms and stuff like that, I know there's an invisible rule book around like what uh -huh. we should and shouldn't do, right? Sure. Um, have you ever offered to go Dutch on a first date? Like ask the girl if yes. she wanna go Dutch with me? Yes. Never. Never? Yeah. You've always offered to pay full? Yeah. Personally, I think like it should be whoever asked the other person out to offer to pay first. Okay. okay. And also on a first date. I think yeah. it's nice. Okay, there's certain gender norms when it comes to dating, right? Right. Like you want to show that Shiver isn't dead. You're yeah. a gentleman and yeah. you want to pay. Yes, okay. Yeah. okay. So I'll always offer to pay first. Yeah. And I if the girl offers to split the bill with me, yeah. I'll be like, nah, it's okay. Yeah, you can yeah. get me the next time. Huh. Yeah. And then second date. Huh. That's a good one. That's that's why I tell myself it's kind of smooth, but yeah. I don't know if it is. Uh. But there was no second date uh, for some of them more. <laughs> you don't have to say it to the camera. <laughs> I'm a little bit more complex when it comes to these things. I don't know if it's like a girl thing or what, but uh -huh. usually, okay, um, more often than not, the guy offers to pay on the first date. Yeah. I will definitely offer. I'll be like, hey, like, do you want to split this? Or like, would you like to, you know, or would you like to go for drinks after, like you mentioned, hmm. or get the next one or whatever. Usually, they'll say no. Yeah. But if they say like, yeah, okay, you get it. Or like, yeah, okay, we can split. I might take it as maybe the date didn't go as well as I thought really? it did. Yeah. Am I overthinking? I don't know. I might think like, oh, my company wasn't like worth his while to like get me the dinner. No. <laughs> I don't know. This is just me in my head. Yeah, I don't actually so, verbalize So for you, thoughts. offering to split the bill with someone, maybe it means like the date is not no, going as well. No. If it's not going well or if I have fully decided I don't want to continue a second date, I will just say, don't worry, I got it. Yeah. So you feel like you don't owe the person anything? Yeah. Basically. Interesting. Is it rude? Oh my god, I don't know. No, I don't no, know. It's not rude. It's, it's just interesting. But do you think now in this day and age, you know, with social media, with a lot of changing ideas and all that, these norms are shifting? I think slowly. Yeah. Because we're opening up to more conversations online, mm -hmm. yeah, especially on like TikTok and stuff. Yeah. People are not as afraid to discuss certain dating norms, certain invisible rules you have to uh, abide by. Mm. Yeah, which is good. Uh. So people will slowly think from the other perspective. And the interesting thing is, you know, now um, in our generation too, people are so open to talking about many, many different issues, relationship status, genders, everything like on social media and, you know, in a public space, right? Mm. So it's interesting because in this book called The Mating Game, it talks about how LGBTQ relationships might be doing better because there's no gendered norms and they strive for like an equal dating experience. So how do you feel about that? I don't really know too much about it. Mm. I've done some like feminism studies, but yeah. I don't know too much about the dating world in the LGBTQ community. Mm. So I can't say much yeah. on their behalf, right? Yeah, yeah but I, I can imagine it taking place. Yeah. Like maybe they won't be as restricted 
as certain rules that we might face yeah. in, a, in a sense. Yeah. So that means also like, you know, when it comes down to dating, you would definitely just want to date someone who is on the same page as you, has the same ideals. For sure. Not and I think it's important on the first date, right? To yeah. feel like you're being viewed as an equal half. I've heard arguments like the girls would tell me that, oh, you know, I put in that time to do my makeup. I travel all the way down here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm spending my evening with you. Yeah. That's my fair share yeah. for the yeah. night. Yeah. And I'll be like, okay, that's cool. Mm -hmm. But I also did take time to come down here. Yeah. Do your makeup yeah. also. You know, do okay, your hair. Maybe no makeup. I did like 10 seconds on my hair. That's yeah. 10 seconds of yeah. my life. Yeah. <laughs> 10 seconds of your life went down into that. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I did put in some effort as well. Yes. But I feel like the main point about um, offering to split the bill or just letting the other person know that we are equal mm. when it comes to dating is very important. Because mm. I feel like if the dating dynamics from the very start is not yeah. close to at least 50%, right? Or even 45%. It's gonna just go downhill later on yeah. in a relationship. And I feel like what we addressed also about, you know, your career choices, the phase of life that you're in, um, your financial status, you know, where you're yeah. at in life and stuff like that. All that really comes into play when it comes to dating as well. Because yeah. imagine this, I mean, you know, I'm so proud of us women nowadays. Like, we are so much more career-oriented now, more than ever. Everyone's like, you know, I want to prioritize myself. I want to prioritize as my career I want to own my own apartment mm. things like that I think that's super cool that a lot of young women out there are doing this now of course which is you know then throwing the balance off a little in regards of the old school way of thinking oh yeah right? the old school way is the man has to bring the food to the table right? yeah exactly the man got to provide for the family and I feel like a huge part of society still views it as the same old way yeah mm. they'll be like oh what is the purpose of a man Mm. If not to bring food and provide for family. Well, I had a very eye-opening conversation with a friend of mine recently. Um, he's this like super good-looking dude. And we were on the topic of relationships as well. So I said, hey, like, you know, you're doing you're doing decently at work and stuff, but you've always said that you want to be a stay-home dad. But his parents, Asian parents, say, no, you can't be a stay-home dad. You can't you gotta go out and work. And he's like, yeah. but my girlfriend, slash soon to be fiance wife, is super successful and she's earning good money. Yeah. Why can't I be the one staying at home? I know, right? Because he actually doesn't mind doing the reverse. Like, he doesn't mind taking care of the kids, cleaning up. Like, he loves doing that stuff. Okay, that's great. So, that's great. Yeah. There are I mean, people if my partner earns more than me, yeah. I'll put on a cute apron and I will make With food. nothing underneath. Yeah, yeah, if that's what you like, right? <laughs> right? I'm not judging here. Yeah, but no. honestly, okay, I, I don't think I'm suitable to be like a stay-at-home dad. Mm. I can't stay home all day. Yeah. It'll be too relaxing and then I would just lose track of whatever is in my life. Yeah. So I, I can't do that and I would appreciate if my partner goes out to work as well. Yes. So I wouldn't want to have like a stay-at-home mm -hmm. partner, you mm. know what I mean? Okay, yeah. so it has to be someone of an equal, you, you know, someone I, I feel like sometimes goals. if you have too much time to yourself, you just get lost. Yes. You don't in know your what thoughts. to do. Yeah. Okay. I think it's kind of scary yeah. to do that. Okay. So well, all the best in your dating life. Please keep us updated. Sure. We can do a follow up mini episode okay. on your dating life in the next few months. Few months. Wow. Please that Optimistic. <laughs> I'll, I'll go and drink a bit more. Yeah. You okay. can meet some people. We'll, we'll take him out next time. Mm. We'll take him out. You never awesome. know. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us here today for Thank bearing you for it all me. on our episode. Once again, <laughs> Men Explain is back. We're so excited to be back. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Men explain if you liked it please hit the like share and subscribe button we actually drop new episodes every alternate thursdays and do remember to let us know what you think about this episode down in the comment section below and we will see you soon bye, -bye. bye. you in an apron soon okay i'm yeah, waiting for that I want to see <laughs> with that. nothing underneath mm, mm, uh, mm.